everybody's friend in Tyler It's your only black friend because your best black friend I wouldn't trade him for another black friend Cause black friends are rare as you should be aware He's mom and Richard Pryor so just sit and stare It's everybody's friend in Tyler It's everybody's friend in Tyler Hello everybody, this is Tyler Preston 20. I'm here with two Colombians. The first Colombian is Punish Ramura, and the other Colombian is Chain. Uh -huh. More Apple in this. Okay, um, I guess my first question is like, what's your backstory for both of you? Oh, well, my backstory, I'm actually from a little town in Valle del Cauca. Mm, I won't say which one for uh, identity identity purposes and then uh, years later i moved to uh, to the capital cali and well i'm currently studying uh, foreign languages uh, with emphasis in french and english and uh, well i get i guess that's it <laughs> i'm kind of curious in your opinion like which is more easier english or french Oh, Eng English is far easier because even if it's just uh, casually, we're, as a general rule, we're more in contact with English than with French. And it's not, it's pretty common to find people that uh, their very, their very first contact with French is when they enter the, pro the, the program. So um, when people start uh, focusing on French there, it's like, their very first first uh, steps to learn the language. So uh, for me, it's easier English just out of habit. I'm kind of curious, like is bilingual education standard in Colombia or? Um, well, uh, it's standard, I don't think so. Well, English is taught as a, as a second language, but there are certain schools that focus on uh, other languages like in Cali, the, uh, there's the German Colombian uh, high school which teaches English but focuses more on German and yeah, but it's mandatory no, but English is uh, English is taught as a, at least as a second la uh, language, but no, fo the, the focus depends on the school really. Pretty much what I noticed, like a, it's pretty much like a pattern in Colombia, like all the, you know, like the, you know, pretty much like the private schools, you know, like the, you know, like the, you know, better private schools all teach English, you know, pretty much no one goes to public schools in like, you know, the rich, like the middle class areas of Colombia only, it seems like it's like a, you know, like a poor thing, you know, like Chusma, you know, how they say it in Colombia, you know, it's pretty much like, a, it's pretty much Chusma to go to a public school, you know, you want to be treated like a, you know, respected, you have to go to a private school or send your children there. It's kind of it's kind of interesting you mentioned private school. Um, is it true that they also force people to also wear the uniform when they go to those private schools? Many of them, you know, have you know uniform standards. You know, like some of them have strict dress dress codes. You know, to be exact. Uh, oh yeah, there's um as a general rule, um, schools have uh, dress code uh, have dress codes. Uh, yeah, the uniforms and. Um, Depend and depending on the school, you and you can recognize the school the kid goes to uh, by looking at, at their at their uniform. But well, coming that this is a Catholic a Catholic uh, country, it's pretty it's pretty standard. You said that just as a Catholic country, like is there a separation of church and state? There are schools that, uh, for example, are led by Franciscans, and they they do have the this uh, subject called religion. But when it's for public schools, religion is taught more as a how to say it, like um, more like morals or uh, manners or manners with people. So it's not as religion so it's religion but not really religion but for some private schools they are religious schools and they add in their code that there's two well the the religious code there are nuns uh, i there's franciscan schools and that's that kind of stuff yeah so yeah yeah even though it's like you know clearly you know, like religion is is not a religious government you know religion does have a heavily influence on the colombian culture and even though my profile pic says, you know, 
well, you can't say I'm Catholic. No, I am not Catholic. I'm actually Buddhist. So <laughs> those might be really small numbers there. Like how small is the yeah, percentage? Pretty much like, you know, there's like, like little to no communities of Buddhists in Colombia. It's pretty much like Catholic dominated, you know, and they're like, you know, pretty much like ha- almost like half of like the private schools I, you know, experience are pretty much like religious, you know, or like at least, you know, have a, you know, heavy religious, heavy religious influence in them. I was mostly home taught and homeschooled and public schooled. But yeah, from but yes, from my what my cousins, you know, tell me about private schools, you know, some of them, you know, had do have a heavily, you know, Catholic influence. And sometimes, you know, it's straight up religious, you know, how they're playing like, you know, how you seen like, you know, religion schools in America about Christianity and Jesus. You know, like, you know, me I think like the Virgin Mary is like a, a like huge, you know, like religious icon in many, you know, parts of Colombia, including Bogota in some areas. As far as the crime is concerned, like, have any of you um, experienced, like, um, at first-hand experience, like, people being affected by crime? Well, I've got, I actually got hit by the crime battle once when I was, like, um, 15, uh, uh, some drug addict uh, robbed and mocked me from my bus and from, well, the money I had to go back home the, to pay for the bus trip. But luckily, I had a, a bit more hidden in my in my backpack, so I was able to go back home. Uh, I was waiting for the for the bus, and there was a um, an elderly man waiting with me, and some guy in a bicycle tried to to steal his to steal his phone. It was like um, seven a.m. or so. Well, more more like uh, uh, familiar tragedies. Uh, there's been some unfortunate events in my family. Let's just say that I've lost loved ones to crime and whatnot. What kind of crime exactly? If I don't mind, if you don't mind me asking. Um, some scam involving a uh, an, an SUV. I mean, like I wish I had like your experience when in which you only experience you know some you know crime. Pretty much, I had to you know grow up in that crime. Murder, gun stabbings, uh, drug, you know, lethal drug injections, you know, pretty much like all the, you know, hard, you know, the all the hard crime from my childhood. I don't remember the town names, but like they're very, they're like small, you know, they're like, you know, like not very populous, you know, they, they pretty much have like little to no electricity, like the houses are pretty much like made of, you know, shit you find in, uh, you know, survival games. <laughs> you know, like, you know, like, oh, like the base like basic metal like i'm trying to remember but but yeah it's pretty much like you know like very poor housing you know little to no electricity like when you have to take a bath you don't you don't get like a shower like you do in, in america you probably have to, like take a bucket you know and have to like you know make sure like you know heat it up or you know cool it down depending on what you want it's, it's pretty Ooh. much a pain in the ass and the same thing apply for you uh punish um well uh, my town was um, uh, wasn't ju- wasn't as well as bad off, but let's just say it was like maybe 10, uh, 20 years behind behind the rest of the country. So uh, while I was growing up in my town, it was like living in the uh, in the eighties when it was the nineties, and just there were there were a few stuff that that were behind like. Um, um, like a bit of like TV and um, warm water, uh, uh, calentadores de agua. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't uh, it wasn't okay, a little behind, but was okay uh, technology wise. And just like one time, I remember it was like out of five, you know, it was like my mom was like, you know, driving me to like work, you know, since she couldn't leave me home. And pretty much like, you know, she had the window down, so it's like a hot day. And I remember like a homeless guy, you know, having like a glass shard, you know, pretty much sticking up right direct, right directly to her throat, you know, pretty much saying like, you know, general, give me your money. And I remember taking it and then stabbing it with him. And then my mom just drove away, you know, she reported it to the police. It's, it's kind of funny you mentioned electronics. How much does TVs, game systems, all those stuff cost there? Oh, at least, oh, at least t- double. Uh, sometimes you can find like, I found like a switch for like o- one, over one thousand, you know, U.S. dollars. Where yes, do you and, live? This because like Bogota, this is like in, in like Bogota Mall. This is not even like you know poor areas. This is the capital we're talking about. You know, oh, PlayStation can cost up to six hundred dollars. 
you know, you know, PlayStation 4, like right now, you know, cost like, you know, 350 or two, they can cost up to $600. You know, games can cost like your average on triple A, you know, you know, shooter, Call of Duty, whatever. They can cost like over a hundred dollars for a single game, not even standard edition. Prices are very prices are very high compared to the US from at least for where I'm from. Yeah, usually for for games it's like sixty dollars new and then like for systems like for the switch. I think that's like what was it, three hundred dollars for the switch? Uh, um no. that's that's Bogota for you, but um everything everything uh, is spen is expensive in Bogota. Here in, in for example in Cali, um if you if you know where to look around, um, you can find a switch for around um million doscientos million doscientos pesos colombianos. Uh, a million two two hundred uh, Colombian pesos, which um converted to uh, American dollars is a bit more than 300 uh, 300 dollars because there's still taxes applied to um to electronics and since in Colombia by law uh, video games are considered like gambling they have more taxes but it's still what wait considered to be gambling what yeah, it's the same. It's the same issue in, that in Brazil, but it's not as bad. Uh, video games are still a bit more expensive than in the U.S., but it's not like in Brazil, where an Xbox One costs like what a thousand dollars. Okay, so when you said that it's considered to be gambling, like, are you talking about games that are like with gambling elements, or just all games? I don't know exactly the law, but a friend actually explained me a bit about it that technically by law games are considered like gambling, so the the taxes applied to it. And but really that's just in paper because they're still sold everywhere uh, everywhere. And the only limitation is that the clerk um if it's for a mature game, the clerk um sometimes will ask for uh, for the ID. But sometimes people just care uh, about making a sale. So even if a kid asks for a game that he shouldn't be buying, they will just give it to them. <laughs> of course. Let me tell you, in Colombia, like in certain parts of you know, like you know, Bogota, like in the poor areas, you know, like pirating and loop and like bootlegs are extremely popular in you know certain parts of Colombia. Yeah, it's actually actually very common. In fact. Um, I would say that one of the reasons Netflix doesn't quite stick here yet is because piracy is still a better option than a Netflix subs subscription or buying original games because like what, uh, a video, let's just say one season of Games of Thrones, let's say two DVDs, they cost about uh, between 3,000 and 5,000 pesos colombianos, Colombian pesos. So that's like maybe uh, less than five dollars uh, for the full season. And I know, like, and I know, pirating is extremely popular or common since I pirate myself. <laughs> <Of course. laughs> Me too. Yeah, I pirated too much. a lot for the uh, Nintendo DS. I had my R4, and for of course also for my PlayStation One. Uh, but yeah, piracy is like very common. Just want to if you want to like a you know some food or like or even electronic, you're pretty much like gonna have to you know spend a bunch of money in like the city part, in which electronics always cost like at least fifty percent more than in the U.S. Or you have to go to the black market. That's true. It's co it costs al at least fifty uh, percent more than in the U.S. Okay, how does much it, how much does Netflix cost in Colombia? Catorce mil pesos al mes. It's not a lot, but um, paying every month for for it when the Latin American selection of, of series is not really that good compared to American is really not worth it. So you don't have like American movies or any other movies besides oh. Colombia? No, no, yeah. there are there are col um, American movies, but there are certain series that are not on on the Latin American Netflix, but they are in the uh, American Netflix due to uh, licenses reasons. So, re so really, the um, Netflix Latin American Netflix selection is smaller than the American one. That's one of the reasons two people just don't bother with Netflix. 
I remember, I remember like a series where my one of my aunts was like a main, was like the main actress. She's like a millionaire now in Colombia, so she's like a very famous actress. You know, my aunt. You know, your aunt. Her, yeah, she. Her name is Ana Maria Zapata. Ana Maria Camper or Ana Maria Zapata Camper, something like that. She, yeah, she's like a famous. She's like I don't know, semi-famous or famous actress in Colombia. I'm so disconnected from Colombian uh, farandula, from Colombian celebrities, that I have no idea who's who anymore. But yeah, I'm pretty much like uh, 90% of like the novellas, at least I watch or my grandma watch, I'm pretty much like acting on par with Monty Python. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's supposed it to be, that, is, is it supposed to be funny or like... Uh... Yeah, it's supposed to be dramatic, but like sometimes it comes passes off as like a you know unironic comedy since like the acting becomes so terrible and how they're trying to be like so serious and the music always you know makes it i make always makes the situation worse they never pick the right music um, watching a colombian telenovela is like watching the first part of mulholland drive when everyone's uh, overacting so horribly it it kind of feels like that I'm kind of curious, is the dubbing industry also big in Colombia, kind of like with Mexico? Um, not so much, but ever since the crisis in Venezuela, there are more uh, clients, clientes, uh, between quotes that are um, paying for Colombian or Chilean or um, Argentinian dubs, and none of them are good, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes some some I was I remember watching like an Ice Age dub and it like said like he's the politics. He always talk like this. No, the Granny Kenshin was dubbed in Colombia, and it's there's so many mistakes about name pronouncing and whatnot that it's, I mean, it's so bad it's good. But surely there's like some good movies from there, right? I don't remember um, seeing any like good movies in Colombian movie theaters, at least in original. Pretty much like 90% of them are like, you know, I'm dubbed like American movies or like, you know, Amer like pretty much like all like the popular movies, like you see like, you know, like Bogota, you know, pretty much all American movies. Some of them have subtitles. Some of them are dubbed like, you know, awful. Original Colombian movies are kind of like a rare novelty. Well, um, the... There very rarely there are good uh, Colombian movies right now. It's mostly the uh, they get mostly comedy and whatnot uh, and whatnot. And honest, no, it's just no. My I took uh, a class about uh, cinema, and our teacher told us to support the Colombian movie industry. So there are more, so there are more good movie, uh, good movies out there. But it's hard to support the industry well where it's mostly pretty pretty cheesy comedy as far as food is concerned i'm not really familiar much with the food in colombia but what kind of food do they serve there um, arepa is very popular there pretty much like arepa is like kind of like a flour you know it's like pretty much like a baked flour it kind of looks like a pancake you know arepa is arepa is best described as a thicker uh, taco <laughs> okay not real. Yeah, pretty much like the best way to summarize it. It's pretty much like hard to compare it to any other food. It's pretty much like baked flour, you know, like kind of like flat. Some, you know, if you put it with fried egg, it tastes delicious. Oh yeah, um, you can use it to eat some of like fried egg or uh, scrambled eggs. Maybe add some um, sausages. It's really yeah. good. Yeah, pretty, yeah, pretty much like you know, pretty much like the way you have a you know good. Uh, Arepa is pretty much put butter and salt and voila. I think paella. I don't, I, I don't know. Is like paella is like a really Colombian or like you know, you know. But that's per, a pa Yeah, that's a snack. Yeah, pretty much like paella is very popular in Colombia. What about rice? I'm pretty sure that's pretty popular here too. Well, compared what, what? to other foods, it's kind of like you know medium in popularity. Um, actually, we eat, we eat a lot of rice here because it mostly because it's cheap and it fills you up and it can la and it can last for at least a day or two. So it's more for economy than 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 it tastes good. And yeah. I remember that Chile apparently in Chile they laugh at us because we eat rice with everything. Barbecues is very popular, you know, like, you know, pretty much like sausages, like the pretty much like one of the biggest like street foods. And we call it sausage. Yeah, we put it with pineapple sauce and most, and yeah, it tastes delicious. 
we are sinners. We um, actually Hawaiian pizza is really popular here. Yeah, we we kind of love pine. We kind of love pineapple with like like meat. You know, sometimes yeah, like Hawaiian burgers is very popular. It's yeah, better yeah, than like say fried pineapple. It's like a slice of fried pineapple, <laughs> and like, you know, like bur and like you know burgers with fried beans, uh, guacamole. As far as uh, expenses is concerned, besides electronics, how much is food there, and then is it really expensive? No. Um, uh, well, prices fluctuate depend depending of the season and the weather conditions. You know. Um, oh yeah, exactly. For example, in in one department, in one state, we could say the some product some products prices actually doubled because the the highway to the um, to there is blocked and trucks can't and take the product there. So what's available just doubled its price. And do you also have um, American restaurants in Colombia too? Are they popular? Um, Only fast food. You know, sometimes McDonald's is sometimes there. Sometimes you see a Starbucks. We have our own versions. Pretty much like the McDonald's in Colombia is called El Corral. Ah, oh, El Corral is genial. Yeah, I always go there for the milkshakes. That's that's the only reason I really go there. Honestly, um, McDonald's is only popular here because the ice cream. Everyone agrees that the burgers are absolutely awful. The <laughs> The French yeah, everyone goes to El pretty much everyone goes to El Corral for the ice cream. It, it's pretty much like a fact. Um, I actually like the El Corral, uh, the El Corral's burgers. KFC is taking is taking is taking up here too because they they like offer coupons all the time. So there's always you can always use them to get a cheap combo. And chicken is is generally a popular a popular choice. So. They're taking off here uh, pretty well. Yeah, I remember like you know, there's a KFC version in in Colombia called Frisbee. Is that right? Frisbee. Oh yeah. Frisbee. Frisbee. Yeah. Yeah, just, yeah. It's called Frisbee. It's like a <laughs> it's pretty much like a cartoon chicken with like a chef hat, you know, like a you know like the chef clothes. You know, it's pretty much like you know you know col chicken in Colombia tastes like a lot better, like fried chicken. You know, it tastes a lot better and doesn't just in America, to be honest. Hmm. Um, I haven't had the chance to taste um, col um, American chicken, but I've heard that usually uh, food here is better is better because it doesn't have as many um, preservatives. Grease. So. Yeah. Actually, oh, food no. here is pretty greasy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so greasy. Like you know, sometimes they give you like you know, like little like like little gloves like you put on just to eat the chicken. <laughs> <laughs> It's not like actual gloves. It's kind of like, you know, like one of those like plastic, you know, gloves like, like you see through. You know, but yeah, they give you that sense like very greasy, but it's like not so much pervers preservatives, you know, or, add or added, you know, like, I don't know, food to make, you know, enhance the flavor. I'm kind of, I'm kind of curious, like how big is uh, political correctness there compared to America? Not big, really. Yeah, social justice is pretty much like, you know, like almost like endangered in Colombia. Um, I although I once I was watching the TV and there were some uh, sort of women marching and one of them got uh, mentioned the well, well uh, el innombrable uh, was some Bogotan chick uh, saying something about el patriarcado and maybe that's something that's that may take a hold a bit in Bogota but. The thing with Bogota is that no one likes Bogota. So if some if something takes off in Bogota, you can be sure that the rest of the country is going to hate it. Yeah, pretty much like in terms of like the LGBT, I have I have seen no LGBT like you know like activism in uh, Colombia, not because it's like illegal or like is it illegal uh, LGBT like activism in there or no or restricted? I don't remember honestly. No, not really. It's it's not illegal or anything, but. Um, the gen the general attitude we could say is that if they um it's the attitude is that not to complain i mean there isn't the, there's injustice the people uh, yeah we're getting killed and this and whatnot yeah, but like, this is yeah, Colum like this is Colum here still like a bunch of issues you know in human rights yeah but this is colombia everyone gets killed here everyone gets shit and just saying that oh no i'm being mistreated because i'm lgbt good news we all get mistreated here for different reasons yeah now just stop stop complaining 
I'm kind of curious. Is gay marriage legalized in Colombia? And I think it's no. Yeah, I heard it. Yeah, I heard it's no. Like generally, South America, gay marriage in South America is like, eh. Well, legal. It's it's legal. It's legal. Not approved by the church, but mm, a couple can go to the um, to the la notaria and sign off that that they're they're in a union. So it's not like the big parade. It's technically legal i mean it's in the papers if you can go with your partner and say and send the papers and say they're uh, they're together but as marriage marriage is not recognized like that uh, at least that's how i get it speaking about corruption like how corrupt is the government there and what kind of politicians oh, oh boy <laughs> well it's like uh, politics and corruption here is like mixing for in american terms mixing the west wing with um, the West Wing with House of Cards and sometimes it gets like like Game of Thrones in which um, some people get other people killed, killed for political reasons. Yeah, and drug trafficking is pretty much like an obvious reason in Colombia. You know, in some, yeah, because sometimes, you know, crime is so high. Like instead of like normal police officers, we have fucking military soldiers like like straight from the army, just like you know, patrolling the streets. Oh yeah, there there are uh, there are certain neighborhoods in Cali where only the the army, the actual army, uh, goes in there for security reasons. It's that bad. Yeah, you can see, and you can tell by the you know, like the Galils, they have like assault rifles and you know, like the jeeps. Has there been an incident where there was like a brutal police brutality from those army people? Uh, it's. Police brutality is like gen, like police brutality is like you know downplaying it. We have straight up human rights violations at times. Uh, yeah, the thing is, people, um, um, he's right. Um, it it is downplayed here in part because people, I I guess is it's so he's so tired of um, insecurity and stuff that some are willing to overlook. Um, police brutality so as long as the criminal is killed or we get or get or we or we get rid of the problem if you know what i'm saying so uh, there has been some issues like the falsos positivos fake positives uh, in which um, several people were disappeared by the police or the army and made look like they were like they were from uh, criminal groups FARC or other gr criminal groups but there are some rumors that some of them were actually criminals but not that bad as in um, maybe hitmen or maybe just burglars uh, yeah. ladrones so yeah post, you know there have been many i heard like there have been many incidents you know in which like reporters and journalists were have been jailed before by the government mm, i'm sure they have been jailed but i don't i'm not aware aware of specific cases yeah. but there have yeah, been like, general, like you know you can like during like the you know like when the civil war was like you know very heated you know journals and reporters have been jailed I have to look into that, but I do know that one journalist was killed by Pablo Escobar, uh, the director of El Espectador. Oh, Pablo Escobar. Oh, I remember that guy. It was like, in pretty much the way to summarize Escobar is like, pretty much like, you know, through drug, you know, trafficking, you know, pretty much drug, but he became rich, you know, he tried to help a town. And pretty much like, later on, he tried to become like a politician in which the government just, just said, no, we're not going to let you become a politician. Pretty much Pablo got angry and he started like a, you know, kind of like civil war between the government and uh, his like cartel. Which brings me to the whole um, the narcos in Netflix, because it's funny how um, the United States is so fascinated with him and yet they fail to really portray or to um, get just how how rich and how evil he could be he could be they pretty much glamorize it there was actually a colombian um well it, it was a telenovela about pablo escobar and i think it was while it has its fair share of, of while while it had its fair share of drama it i said it was accurate in terms of events during his reign of terror, we could say.
It's kind of funny you mentioned how you're saying that they're trying to downplay him in American media because they did the exact same thing with uh, Che. Basically, I've seen people with the Che Guevara shirt on, even though they have no idea what he is and what he did in Cuba. Yeah, pro- oh, yeah. yeah I, remember, remember, I remember a time where he called like the Negro was lazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and he wanted to say to send all the gays to camps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably like, you know, like Gulag, the homosexuals. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, but somehow they're just wearing the shirt like he didn't do anything wrong. Yeah, he didn't do nothing. He was a good boy. He didn't do <laughs> there was like so many people, you know, doing the exact same thing for Castro when he passed away. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much like in like Colombia. Yeah, pretty much like the reason like, like you know, like um, Bill Clinton got involved with the whole, you know, like Pablo Escobar because like, I heard like he started, you know, like Pablo Escobar trying to set drugs, you know, like in, you know, into America and, you know, and, and ended up like killing some civil American civilians and border control, you know, in general, like, you know, police officers and pretty much like Bill Clinton was getting tired of this shit. So pretty much like, you know, decided to, you know, get involved with uh, Colombia's, you know, kind of civil war ish going on. You know, it's pretty much like, you know, like, you know, sort of starting like pesticides, you know, you know, to help to help prevent the, you know, drugs, you know, being planted, you know, and pretty much like that pretty much didn't work since, you know, like, you know, the coca just adapted to the pesticide and straight and started, you know, started doing it underground, you know, or, you know, with like, you know, glass houses or how do you call them? Greenhouses. Yeah. Yeah. Greenhouses. Um, Even then there, the Colombian jungle is just so vast that there's still um crops of coca of coca hidden hidden in plain yeah. sight because the yeah, territory I, is yeah, so I, saw a lot of, I saw a lot of coca i saw i took it for myself and, and even you know took some i did um, I, yeah I, coca is very good to be honest in colombia it's a good business i won't die <laughs> <laughs> no, like, like actual product you know if you do coca in colombia it's very good <laughs> we got a good product <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, if you want to try good cocaine, just go to Colombia, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I'm trying to be good and not use drugs, you know. <laughs> it's just that at this point, at this point, with the the reputation the country has, I'd say most people just say, "Well, Colombia is more than coke, but yeah, we mo- we make coke, um, but we make it because you consume it." <sighs> Yes, that like you know, Pablo Escobar's house was turned into a theme park. I actually, I actually heard rumors about it, but I don't know if it's like you know true or not. Let me look it up. Uh, I do know that one of his hippopotamus, uh, pet hippopotamus, uh, escaped and had to be put down. Wait, wait, a pet hippopotamus? Yeah, he had very he had a lot of exotic pets. <laughs> I guess there's no difference than Michael Jackson having bubbles. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Pablo liked his Afri- his African pets. Uh, double sense. Yeah, I and think he even have rhinos. Oh yeah, um, tigers like, too, uh, or was it lions? Uh, you know, he had all the, you know, Colum- African pets. Yeah, the the issue with the hippo was that it escaped from his uh, from his finca. So, and it was swimming in the river, and there are people living uh, near the river, and hippos are, well, very aggressive. So it yeah, had it also to be... had, like, ostriches, elephants, giraffes, tigers, and lions. Yeah, the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I the... Love them. And the hippo had to be put down, and people got angry because, uh, well, the hippo got killed. Yeah, and actually, I remember like an uh, like one like one of his ostriches like stole my you know like my like pretty much like one of my grandmother's earrings, you know. Oh my god! Like straight from the ear, like straight from the ear. Ow. It, was, it was kind of a fun. It didn't hurt at all. She wasn't like you know like injured or anything, but it was like funny. Just like watching the ostrich like you know like escape, you know, just like stealing the earring. <laughs> and my my grandmother didn't you know he didn't cry. She just laughed so hard. <laughs> okay. Nope. Sp- uh, speaking about animals, um, how do uh, Colombians view dogs and cats? Oh, they're all oh, they're pretty much everywhere in the streets, man. Straight cats and dogs. It's it's like it's pretty much like the norm. Yeah. 
sometimes people also have parakeets. Uh, yeah, much like um, you know, I don't think there's like a lot of stray cats, but like if you go to like a like an average town in Colombia, you're guaranteed to see at least one or two stray dogs. Oh, yeah, God. sadly. Yeah, and sometimes you, and sometimes you see like cows and horses just running, just running wild. Yeah, <laughs> I, in the towns you you often see horses and cattle going around. Many people trying to sell them or as a means of transportation. Yeah, so yeah, and plus like you know, I think like butcher houses aren't that are I don't know if they're like popular or not, you know, or common, you know, but like they exist. Um, I think that's all I'm gonna have for the stream. It's been going on, I think what was it, forty one minutes or something. Um, uh, I really appreciate you guys coming on and talking about your experience and your country. And for everybody else that is watching, I appreciate you guys watching it. And until next time, take care everybody.